Hi everyone, I hope that you're well. If you're planning a trip to the Philippines, here are 28 things I think you should know before traveling. Bring some Filipino pesos in cash before you arrive, as well as more than one bank card. Hopefully your bank card will work in the Filipino ATM, but if they're like mine, they won't. And you might be in a bit of a pickle when you arrive in the country. So to avoid this, make sure you've got some Filipino pesos in cash on you before you arrive to just help you get settled into the country. As for which bank cards to bring, I recommend having a travel cash card. Something like a Monzo or a Revolut, there are several options that you can go for, but I'd say this is the best way to have your money in the Philippines. When you do withdraw money from an ATM, pretty much every single one will charge you 250 pesos per transaction. So try and get the absolute maximum amount of cash that you can out at a time so that you're minimizing the amount you have to spend this fee. And you're definitely gonna need cash because it is pretty much cash only everywhere. Even in places where you might expect there to be a card machine, there's probably not. You're gonna need cash on you at all times. And also really try to break your big notes down as much as you can because vendors in the Philippines, hate giving change. They will always, always ask you for the exact change. And that can be a bit of a pickle when you only have these big, big notes. So I would always try to break my big notes down when I was in somewhere like a supermarket where you know they're definitely gonna have change. Bring a water bottle with you. The Philippines are really good at having filtered watering stations in pretty much all the hostels and restaurants or wherever you may be staying. It means that you never have to buy plastic bottles, which is amazing. Thank you so much Philippines for being a step ahead of the game when it comes to reducing plastic use. Just make sure you have a reusable water bottle with you so that you can fill it up at the watering stations. January is not actually dry season. So when you Google like the wet season and the dry season in the Philippines, it will tell you that the dry season starts in January. When I was there for the last half of January, it was just soaking, raining every single day, every single location that I went to. And even speaking to locals there, they were like, yeah, no, it never really gets dry until February. So maybe just something to keep in mind. If I were to plan the time of year my trip could be again, I would probably go from mid-Feb to mid-April because then you also miss the Chinese New Year where everything's really busy and really expensive. Always try to bargain. Most Filipinos will be trying to rip you off the entire time, which can be quite frustrating, but it is in the culture to bargain and try and get a cheaper price. Try not to take the piss. Always keep in mind what you think is a reasonable price for whatever it is that you're paying for. But just know that 95% of the time, whatever price you are initially given for something has been ramped up probably at least double what you should actually be paying for it. If you can, travel hand luggage only. This is because it's gonna save you quite a bit of money on flights. I think I paid anything up to 20 pounds in order to bring a checked in bag on my flight. So that is quite a fair bit extra when it is a cost that you could potentially avoid. Don't always trust the first thing that you hear or read. Take everything day by day and ask lots of people for advice. I mean this in the sense of sometimes it can be quite hard to find information online. And if you just read one piece of advice or you ask one local, it's not always gonna be the correct information. So with anything that you're unsure about in the Philippines, just try and ask as many people as possible to get the most accurate answer that you can. Hostels can vary in price anywhere from 300 pesos to 1500 pesos, depending on the quality of the hostel and whereabouts in the country it is. If you like swimming, pack a mask and snorkel. This was one of the best things that I had in my backpack in the Philippines. Mine are from a brand called Aqualung, which I got in Australia, but you can buy a mask and snorkel in the Philippines. There's just so much water and ocean everywhere around you. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna wanna swim in it. And it's really nice to be able to see and breathe underwater, even when you're at spots when you can't necessarily rent a mask and snorkel. It's just really nice to have your own. Buy yourself a dry bag. Everything gets wet on boats in the Philippines. You can get these in different sizes. Mine is quite big because I would like to be able to fit my towel and my mask and snorkel and everything in here, but you can get just five liter ones if you just wanna keep things like your phone, your keys, your purse, your camera dry. So you can either buy one of these before you arrive in the country or you can just get one when you're in the Philippines. Please take care riding scooters and always wear a helmet. Riding a scooter in the Philippines is fantastic, but it can potentially be very dangerous if you are not sensible. If you have not ridden one before, I found that the island of Sikiho was an amazing place to learn with just really long, straight, quiet roads, didn't have many potholes. It was really nicely paved out. Somewhere which I don't recommend riding a scooter is Karan. The roads are not very well paved. It's very, very busy in the main town. And even as an experienced scooter rider myself, I did not enjoy riding my scooter in Karan. One of the biggest things that Filipino people will try to rip you off with is riding in tricycles. I find it can be very hard to bargain these down though, but you just have to walk away until you get a price that you're happy with. I was sometimes charged 250 
50 pesos for a 15 minute journey. Which according to Filipinos, which I found out afterwards, is just an absolutely ridiculous price to pay. When I was in Bohol and a local arranged my tricycle ride for me, it was roughly around 30 pesos for every 10 minutes that I was in the tricycle. So from then on, I tried to go on that price for how much a tricycle should be charging me. When you're in the big cities, especially Manila and Cebu, you can use an app called Grab. It's basically like the Uber over there. So you can get a really cheap ride and I found it to be fairly reliable. And obviously you don't have to sort out a price with them beforehand. The only time I wouldn't use a Grab is when there was a surcharge for whatever reason, then I found it cheaper just to get in a metered taxi. If you want to buy a camera for the Philippines, but you don't know which one, I actually highly recommend having a GoPro. This is mostly because there is just water and adventure everywhere. And I think a GoPro is a really versatile camera to have. And I think a floaty stick, which looks like this, is probably the best mount for it because it's easy to hold. And if you drop it in water, your GoPro is not gonna sink to the bottom. If you haven't already got your scuba diving license, but you would like to, the Philippines is a great place to learn. There are so many amazing diving spots. And once you have your open water license, it means that you can do fun dives elsewhere in the country and elsewhere in the world for a lot cheaper. If you want to be adventurous in the Philippines, you may find yourself at some point doing some cliff jumping which is really really cool but I see so many people cliff jumping wrong and hurting themselves and injuring themselves so I'm gonna give you a little lesson on cliff jumping if you've never done it before firstly always take off on one foot it makes me cringe when I see people take off for, from like a high cliff jump double footed the reason being is you have so much more control when you take off on one foot so let's say this is the edge of the cliff if I take off on two feet like this, it means that there's a chance that I'm gonna lose my position that I'm in, in the air, and I may end up doing a back flop or a belly flop, and it's just not good. Whereas, if you take off on one foot, you jump out, and then come into the pencil shape before you land in the water, it means that you have so much more control and that you're likely to keep the shape that you want to aim free. So take off on one foot, out, and then pencil in before you land, but not straight away. Does that make sense? I found roamtorio.com, a really good website to use for transport advice. You can literally just input, I'm going from here to here. And it has mostly fairly up-to-date information of the local transport, where the bus is gonna leave from, what time, and the ferries that run. But again, going back to my previous point, don't just rely on this. Make sure you ask lots of local people as well and lots of travelers who may have done the same journey. Don't expect a hot shower in most accommodations unless you are paying at least 600 to 800 pesos a night. If you're staying in a basic hostel, which I was the majority of the time, it's gonna be a cold water shower. But the Philippines is a hot country, so it's fine. Expect to pay extra for everything. What I noticed about the Philippines is that they don't really like to give you an entire cost altogether. Let's say that you're getting on a ferry, for example. You'll pay the cost of your ticket and then you'll walk into the ferry terminal and they say, oh, you need to pay us extra for coming in here. And then you might get onto the boat and then they'll be like, oh, now you have to pay extra for going on here. And now you're on this island, so you've got to pay island tax. All of these prices are small and it doesn't really make sense to me as why they charge them all separately. But it is something that they do. It's something to be aware of. And also another reason why it's really good to break down your big notes into small a change because you're gonna need to divvy it out at these times. I often found when I was booking accommodation on booking.com because sometimes I wanted to stay in a private room or a hotel when I was just a bit sick of people, I would use booking.com to book a private room. And often when it said pay at property, the price ended up being higher when I arrived than what it stated on booking.com. And perhaps it said something small in the terms and conditions, but I recommend really reading into the terms and conditions when it comes to how much you have to pay for accommodation in the Philippines so that you don't get caught out. I highly recommend getting a local SIM card when you're in the Philippines. I had a Globe SIM card, which was what was recommended to me by so many people. And I was really thankful that I was with Globe. I found that I had connection the majority of the time. Another popular option is to go with Smart. And I think Smart is only better on a few islands. If you really wanna be connected the whole time. I know some people that actually had a Globe SIM card and a Smart SIM card, so they had the best of all worlds. I don't think that was necessary necessary. But not only does having a local SIM card mean that you are always connected and find out the things that you need to, but the Wi-Fi is shocking in the Philippines. It's so bad, it's so slow, it very rarely works in many places, and the majority of the time I would just 
hotspot off of my phone for Wi-Fi and that actually worked out really well. So make sure your phone is unlocked so you can get a local SIM card. If you can, I know this isn't always ideal when you're backpacking, but try to book in advance. This is because I found that the good hostels in the Philippines were nearly always booked out. I couldn't just rock up and go there because they were fully booked. So try to book in advance if you can. And the same with flights. I was booking flights like a day or two in advance, but had I booked them a month or two in advance, it probably would have been like half the price. There are so many places that you can go in the Philippines. And if you're on a time limit, it's hard to know how long you can stay in each place and what you can realistically do. So I highly recommend that you try to plan at least a rough itinerary before you leave of how much time you can realistically spend in each location to reach all the places that you want to go to. And don't underestimate how long land and sea travel can take. And even the flights, which are delayed a lot, just never expect to arrive at a destination whenever you think you are going to. If you think a journey is only going to take you a couple of hours, honestly, a lot of the time it can take an entire day. So don't try to cram too much into your trip because you're going to spend a lot of the time traveling and it's going to be exhausting. I personally would say that three to four days is like a comfortable minimum for the amount of time you should spend in each destination slash island. Even if you have a local SIM card, you may be off the beaten track and won't always have connection so I highly recommend downloading each island that you're going to offline on Google Maps. This means that even when you're completely off the beaten track and don't have any connection on your phone you can still figure out where you need to get to or let's say you've got in a taxi and you just want to make sure that they're going in the right direction you can follow it along because you've downloaded it offline. And finally be curious be vocal and smile. Filipino people respond really well to smiles and they love to let you try new things for yourself. If you see something, you're like, oh, that's cool. I wonder how they're doing that or I wish I could do that. Just say, be vocal. Tell the locals what you're interested in and the likelihood is, is that they'll be thrilled that you're interested and you may get to experience something that you wouldn't have otherwise. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. I really hope you enjoy your trip to the Philippines. It's an amazing country. You won't regret it. I have a couple of other videos in this Philippines tips and advice series, which I think you would find really useful to watch. I'll link them in the description. I also have a vlog series of my entire time solo backpacking the Philippines. So I'll also link that below if you want to have a watch. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye. We need more than hopes and wishes for us to make